The life of the coral polyp is not an easy one. They must contend with predation, disease, and most recently, humans. Over the last century, human activities have combined with natural stresses to cause significant and often irreversible damage to coral reefs all over the world. Scuba divers are some of the most active members of the coral reef conservation movement, donating to programs like Project Aware and often volunteering for reef cleanups. However, Many divers do not realise the effects they themselves are having on the reefs. Recently, scientists have begun researching the impacts of scuba divers on coral reef ecosystems. Published papers from all over the world have shown that areas with high diver traffic not only have more broken corals, but also have decreased coral abundance and health. Excited new divers jump in the water with minimal buoyancy skills and don't even realise how many times they are kicking and touching the reefs. Coral forms a mucus layer to protect itself from disease. So when a diver simply touches or scrapes a coral, they make them vulnerable to pathogens. Divers don't even need to contact the reef to harm it. When we kick up sediment, it often lands on corals, smothering them. Studies have shown that divers contact the reef anywhere from 8 times per hour to over 200 times per hour. And that is for just one diver. Many popular dive sites receive thousands of visitors a year. The damage can really add up. Compared to other threats to coral reefs, like global warming, the effects of recreational scuba divers could be easily controlled. Since most divers already care deeply about the reefs, it is often as simple as educating them and making them aware of their potential effects. Good buoyancy and the knowledge that even touching the reef can be detrimental drastically decreases the impacts we have. Some dive schools and even some entire islands have implemented mandatory orientation dives which include a buoyancy check. This can cause a significant decrease in the number of times divers hit the reef. Many communities have created specific buoyancy training areas and many dive schools offer advanced buoyancy courses. Some areas also have programs to mediate the damage by finding and replanting coral fragments. However, despite the current efforts to mediate diver impacts, more needs to be done. Dive schools could put more emphasis on buoyancy during initial training and could encourage advanced buoyancy courses. Additionally, new divers could be instructed to spend the first 5 to 10 minutes of their dives away from fragile corals until they get their buoyancy in check. Ultimately, we must educate divers and non-divers alike about the importance of coral reefs to ensure that these critical ecosystems survive.